Here's episode four of the sailboat project. You can see there the compressor refrigeration system that had to come out. So here is the stern locker pulling out some cables. There's a whole lot of cables in the boat. So I just had to mark them, push them through, pull them through and uh, put them away kind of one by one. back at the powerboat that I've been helping out on and a little neighborhood cat comes out to greet us every now and then. Here's Chris working uh, with the polisher, getting that gel coat looking real good. I, I was in charge of pulling off the tape on some of these guys, pretty satisfying. More satisfying than this clip. And here's Tom also doing a bunch of polishing and uh, yeah, making the boat look really good. So now we're back on the sailboat. This is the fuel tank. And you can see here some of the cables that I got pulled out. So still working on the engine. Uh, not doing a very good job of finding the screw. And then here I'm pounding out the screws or bolts that were holding in the hydraulic backstay panel. Uh, they were gooped in there pretty good. So I just had to do a bunch of scraping carefully to get this panel off of there. Finally got this uh, fuel tank out. It took uh, a little bit of prying and there was a bunch of foam in here, which it turns out is not the way you're supposed to do that. So when I put it back in, I'll definitely not use that foam. Uh, here's one of the winches, the power winches that I'm still having a doozy of time getting off there. Now back to uh, taking things out of the engine compartment. Finally got that old rusty compressor system for the refrigeration out of there. And I always like to get a good sunset when it's nice. So now we're back at the powerboat again for another day of work. Had some neighborhood visitors of a different variety came and I think they were just looking for some food, honestly. The guy's doing some sanding and some fiberglassing and using lots of the best sandpaper out there. There's Tom mixing up some resin, gotta get it just right. Now we're back on the boat and uh, in the cockpit locker there and I am cutting some holes to get better access to the engine. So this boat was built, it wasn't the highest priority. Uh, it was probably more about stiffness and uh, all that because it was built as a racer slash cruiser. So just definitely want to have better access to the engine, even just to disconnect the prop shaft from the transmission I really needed to figure out a better way to uh, get tools in there. So it's pretty dusty work to be sure, so definitely wear a full suit and I try to hold the vacuum hose as well as I can while I'm cutting as well. There we go, so still a bit of a mess in there, but at least I can kind of access it a whole lot better. that penetrating fluid that I sprayed on these bolts. It was pretty tough to get them off there. They were rusted on there pretty good. And uh, you might be asking why I didn't use a socket wrench or the ratcheting end of this crescent wrench that I'm using, and I tried. But there's not enough clearance for the socket to get on the actual head of the bolt. So here I'm showing that I got most of the engine mount bolts out of there so that it's just about ready to hoist up. And there was a cable that had a lug that was too big to pull out and it was still connected to the engine so I just figured it'd be better to cut the head off that one and pull it out. So I borrowed some chain hoists and thought I was ready to go but realized there was still a bolt attached so called it for the night, uh, took that bolt out the next day and then got the engine hoists ready to uh, pull it out of there. This boat came with a Yanmar 3GM30F. Uh, it's only got like 780 hours on it, but you know, since it's from 1995, uh, it has been sitting a lot. So it's just a good idea for future reliability's sake to uh, get it overhauled and just get it rebuilt so that it's basically brand new again. Now 
this was a really hot afternoon for sure, so that's why I'm in my shorts there. So just little by little, you know, this thing weighs uh, around 300 pounds with everything that's connected to it. So I just want to kind of take it easy. I only slightly crunched my finger once, but it was all good the next day. But anyway, uh, still just kind of scooching it a little bit at a time down the cockpit. Got some pieces of plywood there and got some big 4x4s for it to sit on. And I got it right to where the Traveler used to be there. and nice big hole where that cassette rudder steering system used to be so I figured you know what that looks uh, about the right size and I'll just drop it through there onto a pallet or a cart or something definitely wanted to make sure I was going slowly and not having it swing out did have to be pulled toward the stern a little bit to be right in the middle of the hole and I eventually figured out that it would be a lot easier if I was using my foot so it's not as good a shot though. Eventually got it all the way down through the hole it fit like it was designed to do that it definitely was not. had it on the cart here for a minute I did get it back up and get it on a pallet but anyway here is what the engine compartment looked like with the engine pulled out still have the prop shaft there that I need to get out of there but yeah that was a good day there's some other random projects going on this guy's got two big Volvo diesels and a whole lot of electrical issues that Chris is showing me how to work with I also remembered the carbon fiber mass that came with the boat had just been sitting out getting dripped on by sap and whatnot, so I gave it a clean and uh, wrapped it up. This boat was designed and built with fiberglass water tanks, so they're just glassed in, uh, painted on the inside, and they have these inspection hatches at the top. But after all the years and probably not all that much use, they did start looking a little grody, so decided let's uh, cut these off of there so we can take a look and also probably just get some custom steel tanks made because that's really if you're going to be living on a boat you want to have good water tanks and apparently steel is the best you don't taste it Definitely some layers of something that had dried on there, and uh, that's just what happens. There's another tank on the starboard side. This one's a little smaller, but they had a transfer pump so they could use it as ballast, which is pretty cool. iPhone that I use for these uh, shots just glitched out there. All right, anyway, here we are back in the cockpit, marking out the areas that we're gonna push back. We're basically gonna make the cabin area a little bigger and the cockpit a little smaller. So that entails just cutting out these big old chunks of fiberglass, scooching each bulkhead back. Well, this one on the starboard side is scooching it back to match the existing bulkhead that's down there in the cockpit locker. So it's just gonna be one big bulkhead. And on the other side, scooching it back the same 10 and a half inches that I took the starboard side. The tomatoes are finally starting to come in, so I thought I'd just get a quick shot of that. And uh, yeah, looking out the tiny house window, Hank has one of his little dust holes that he digs himself. Yeah, that's it for this time. Thanks a lot for watching.